Master. I'm not on. There I am. Hi. Hey, everybody. What's up, bro? <laughs> Welcome back to 2017 iCast. Uh, Bash you live. Uh, we are live from iCast uh, with with, uh, with a good friend of mine, uh, Aaron Martins. A lot of you guys know him. Thanks for being with us. And we got Dave from Duo Realis. We're going to be talking spy baits, jerk baits, a lot of really, really cool stuff. Thanks for being with us, guys. Glad to be here. Yeah, I, 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 I got to say something really quick. I, I've known of Pete. We haven't done a lot of conversing, but I've known of him from the early 90s, and I just think it's cool that you're doing this. And um, We go way back on a, on a raw deal, actually, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I love this show. So I appreciate that. I appreciate it. We work hard to bring Bass University TV. Uh, we've got subscribers now all over the country, or uh, in 13 countries. What am I talking about? And uh, at iCast here this week, we got a special code, BUTV30. Anybody watching this, you can go try Bass University uh, for free for 30 days. And you can see the great Aaron Martin's <laughs> seminars about Ooh. fishing by water temperature. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, and some other some other great stuff. We've got we've got Aaron there, and I appreciate that. But way back in the day, Dave and I worked for a, a company called Warrior Rods that's right. out of uh, Northeast Maryland, <laughs> and uh, and we had some uh, some fishing rods. I had I I still have. I we had a we had the Pete Gluzak custom crankbait rod, yeah. and we sold two of them. <laughs> and um, that is uh, one of them is still hanging on my wall. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, keep it collectible. <laughs> but uh, yeah. they were great. They yeah. were they were really good rods. And uh, John Euler, a, a friend that we had in common. But um, but boy, you've been all over, Dave. Yeah, you know, yeah. with uh, various companies, and you and you wound up here at, at Duo, creating some uh, amazing tools. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know most people are now finding out about spy baiting, but. Um, it's just been, gosh, I don't know. It's just been a wonderful experience. I, I get to kind of live vicariously through guys that are fishing and Aaron, but even the even the weekend warrior as well. And so it's just really cool to see this uh, technique take off. And actually, I mean, see guys win on it and co you know collect mm -hmm. a check too. So uh, yeah, I had a I had an odd introduction to spy baiting because uh, you know I I I mean I had to do a realis right. Everybody had to have one because it was it was like the thing. And um, and I found a group of smallmouth up at uh, Lake St. Clair, and I'm like, all right, I've got a group of smallmouth. Like they're right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna see how they respond to the to the spy bait. You know, figure can out we, how it works. Can we talk about that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> We're going there. <laughs> well, we gotta be careful with the new it's got, uh, new uh, rules at Bass. You know, it's. Uh, off limits from when they announce the schedule. You want to say well, Clair? No, we're not going to St. Clair. We're good. We're going <laughs> to say nothing about St. Clair. We're not Chesa talking about Chesapeake. Thousand Islands. Chesapeake's coming out. <laughs> Continue. But, but but I start. I'm slow rolling it, and I've got like two and a half pound test on there, whatever. Like <laughs> they told me to throw. And, Spinning rod. And I and I'm swimming it through the schools, and and they wouldn't bite it, and and I'm like, what in the world's going on? And uh, so I threw it out there, and I burned that sucker in as fast as it would go, and they wouldn't stay off of it. They yeah. just came up, and, and, of course, that was a crazy experience, right? It's a, it's a tool that was designed to catch them when conditions are really, yeah. really, yeah. really tough. And it is a slow-rolling technique, yeah. and it is winning tournaments uh, yeah. a, a lot now. Uh, one of my good friends, uh, Scott Dobson, won uh, yep. the Thousand Islands last year. Yeah. Um, in, in about 12 foot of water uh, fishing a spy bait. That's absolutely right. Yeah, he's uh, and he's really taken off uh, just dedicating time to it. Uh, so he he's more than a student now um, in regards to that bait for sure. Yeah, yeah, he's he's turned it into something special. And I know I, I'm pretty sure you spent a little time mm -hmm. spy baiting. I've caught a few fish on some elite tournaments. I mean, it depends where we go. If you're in the right situation for it, it's a killer, what, what killer is, method. What is the right situation? Pressured fish, uh, you know, fish are. Busting on, they would say they're busting on bait and they're going down. They're hard to get to come up back up on top, and they won't eat a swim bait really good. They're kind of nipping at it. You know, mm -hmm. they get kind of weird. You can throw that spy bait through and just wind it through them, and they just eat it. it you know, it, it has those blades that, that rotate, and it, it makes that bait just rock. And you can, you know, I mean, like you said, you burned it, and that's how I've caught a lot of my fish up north. It's actually reeling it like a spinner bait, reeling it fast. Right. You know, you fish three, four feet of water with it and just cover cover the bank with it and go down the bank. I caught a lot of my fish doing that, those big smallies. And the faster you reel, the, the faster, the tighter it gets. So, I mean, it's, it's just like a little fish swimming through the water. It's very natural, and they can't resist. That's why when it swims really slow, it has that wider rock, and it just looks like a fish swimming through the water column. 
All right. Like a little minnow or fish, and they just can't resist it. Well, it, it's funny because uh, Ike told told a story about <laughs> he's got a stupid story. Because when we first get these lures, we were trying to figure them out, you know, and, and he got, you know, these hot off the presses, you know, uh, spy baits, and, and uh, he goes out to his lake, and he's like, wow, that's a, that's a killer little prop bait, you know. And he throws it out, and it sinks. Yeah, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. <And> <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody thinks in the big game. They all know that sinks. He's like, it's broke. You put them back in the box, threw them in the boat, and yeah. then didn't throw them again until uh, I guess you know months later. But uh, yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. We may have to come out with a top water version because it's just so funny. I see we're that's working, coming we're, we're working on that, aren't we, David? Yeah, that looks like a really neat top water. It version. does. Yeah, <laughs> just the way it looks. Um, I would like to just say, you know, it's it is really versatile, and I think mm-hmm. Aaron showed that. Uh, and one of the TV cameras ca- captured him on the flats fishing it. And most people think of it as clear water, deep water uh, technique. Yes, that's that's applicable, and that's what mm-hmm. we do. But it has a lot of versatility. It Chasing does. schools. Different different um, speeds, you know, different water column. Yeah, up, up high in the water column, down low. Right. Drag, drag yeah. and David likes to drag. I mean, I do it too. But if you're in the right situation where it's not real snaggy, you got gravel bottom, and it works really well on the bottom, dragging it. Yeah, I'll, I'll like fish bouncing it. bouncing off of gravel and sand. Wow. I'll fish it down 30 feet and just four inches off the bottom, and I'll pick up big smallmouth mm-hmm. doing that too. Yeah. How, how did this bait come about? Well, actually, the prop bait was called a number of things in Japan. And, it, you know, I think uh, most people think it was a jerk bait that they applied props to. That was one version of it. But guys were taking stick baits and putting props on them in Japan and just playing around with the idea. And uh, it started to get just refined from there. There wasn't really a direct place of origin. It happened in a couple different places in Japan. Guys were just experimenting. And, um, and that's how it kind of got going. The funny thing is, I think... It's back in the fit 1950s, sinking props were already developed here in the U.S. There was versions of them, yeah. So to think that, I don't think, you know, us, Duo, or anybody else was thinking about that, how that revolved. But, um, yeah. but it is kind of interesting. Around. Came back around. And, That's of course, you know, it's a lot more some, refined. But yeah. Some guy, yeah, it's probably some guy 40, 50 years ago was probably playing with something. That yeah. <laughs> who knows how long ago. A lot well, of these baits were designed. We just, we just uh, talked to Ken Duke. Yeah. Uh, from fishing tackle retailer, and uh, he's, he's like got a. He, he remembers everything that's mm-hmm. ever happened in bass fishing. Yep. And he uh, whopper plopper yep. has been out for fifty years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and is a musky lure yep. yeah. that's that sold like up in Wisconsin or something like that. Uh, so that stuff all has come back around again. But uh, it's amazing to see see this product go now, Aaron. One of the, I, one of my problems, and, and maybe you can help me and help the guys listen. Is I'm ha- I have a hard time keeping fish pinned because of the style, the technique. It's a it's a slow, light line, li- almost a little bit of slack in the line sometimes, and, mm-hmm. and I have a hard time keeping fish pinned. It, can you talk a little bit about yeah. the hooks you use, the rods, how you keep them pinned? Well, the good thing is uh, the new uh, the hooks that we has been using for about a year or so now. Mm-hmm. They're actually good to go. They're they're phenomenal. They're uh, they're like a I guess I got really high grade steel. They got good bar bomb. They're really strong, small diameter. Uh, that's important to have a really good hook, of course. Uh, but a, a, the right rod is extremely important. So mm-hmm. on this bait, uh, and I and I, when I fish it shallow, I, I did upsize the hook a little bit when I was bur- reeling it faster. Figured I could, and I went to a size bigger hook, and I was using like 14 pound line, fishing okay. like like a little spinner bait. And I was right. I was yanking them. I was I had a bigger hook, and, and I just actually used like a medium action bait caster for that 90. Uh, but if you want like a really, really finesse situation, like a, a, a soft rod is really important. Mm-hmm. Something that's going to load up nice and that when they jump or when they shake, and they're not going to get a tear in their mouth. You know, if they get just barely get on their lip, they're real, like, especially the water, while the water's really cold, they're just kind of nipping at kind of grabbing at and you just barely get them, maybe get one hook in them. Right. Uh, soft rods going to help you a lot. Like a real, like even like a, something you'd use for like a light drop shot or right. a small little like a light light spinning rod okay be yeah. about, probably the ultimate way of landing if you're having a hard time landing those fish just lighten up on the rod okay that 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 sound advice and uh do you go to the real light lines do you do yeah you use that yeah like uh, when you go that deep uh even braid with floral leader uh mm-hmm. you don't want to use straight braid because you can tangle the the blades when yeah. you're casting it or right. it can hit the water and, and wrap a hook so you want to yep. you want to use like some kind of leader on it but you know, like light braid and a, and a light floral leader for is probably the ultimate. You can get you know, like Sunline makes like seven pound braid now, and that's really thin diameter. If you want to get really deep, that's probably one of the best ways to do it. Plus, you can cast really, really far with it, and it's mm-hmm. a small diameter. You know, braid doesn't sink like floral, but the diameter is so small it's gonna get down there quick. 
but probably the, if you want to really learn it, uh, like four to five pound test on a on a on an eighty on a light spinning rod, and just you can cast it really good. It's it's forgiving. You know, it has, you know, braid can get a little that light braid can be tricky. Uh, but with just straight four or five pound fluoro, is it's a really good way to learn the bait. And it's I know a lot of guys out there might be scared of throwing light line like that, but I've I've fished four pound, five pound a lot on the lead tours and caught. I don't know how many bags over 20 pounds and never broke one off. So, I mean, it's not really that hard to catch those bigger fish on light line. It's yeah. just, yeah, be patient. take yeah. your time. <clears throat> There's a guy. The bite it. There was a guy, um, I can't Sturgeon Open. I'm not too familiar with the, the northeast section, but he was fishing, and he started out with eight and nine pound uh, fluorocarbon. And he would call me and say, you know, I'm catching them. I'm catching them every, every once in a while. And I, can you? Can you go a little bit lighter? Well, I don't want to go. Oh, yeah. And lighter. he finally did. And he started catching all different types of species of fish. And he was catching big smallmouth. Mm -hmm. And he en ended up winning one of those big events out there doing that. So he figured it out. It took him about a year, but he figured it out. The lighter line's going to get lines, you those bites. Deal, yeah. It's also going to position the lure for you, I think, a little bit Allows better. Allows the bait to move a little more. Gets gotcha. a little bit, a little more rock to well, it. Yeah, it's a little subtle technique. So any any more action you can mm -hmm. get out of it is going to be an asset. Yeah. yeah. I I get calls every once in a while, guys talking about losing the fish. So I think you bring up a good point. Uh, what I'm telling guys to do is, I know this sounds ridiculous, but go out in the backyard, hook the lure on the back of the fence, lock the line up real good, tighten the rod up so the rod just tacos over, it's doubled up, mm -hmm. and then loosen your drag. Now you've got the rod incorporated. You've got a plenty of tension because, you know, the tension's going to kind of keep that that hook pegged even if it's not penetrated, mm -hmm. and you have a chance to pull those fish in. And the other thing, too, the, bait, the fish will push the bait quite a bit. So you'll, you'll see them fill them, and then you'll kind of pop and then start reeling. Well, that fish is already coming this way, right? right. So now you, that fish is shaking, and yeah. the guys are getting their own peg from that. Over the years, and especially that bait or any, any of these baits, uh, uh, it's always better to pull harder than softer. Right. Yeah, I, I, in, the, in the past, when I started fishing 20, 30 years ago, <laughs> I'm getting older now, uh, for bass, like in tournaments, uh, I used to kind of like get a big one on, and you get kind of worried. It's, oh, it's bigger, and I, you, know, you kind of back off on it. Yeah. I learned pretty quick that, and then especially now that I've I've been seasoned, I guess, been fishing a lot, a lot longer. Uh, I always pull harder on them. If it's a big one, I never let the pressure off until I land that fish. Right. And that's the same thing with this. Using four pound line, mm -hmm. you know, you got a breaking point, but it's it, on a light rod when you're pulling on it on four pound, it's hard to. If you try to break it off, it's hard. Right. I mean, right. you can you just it'll snap, but as far as you know, where that point is at when you fish it for a while, and mm -hmm. you can keep a lot of pressure on. That's the best way to land them. And, and it just keeps that hook from turning or getting out. Or very rarely, if you get a piece of flesh, I should break on light line like that. Right. You, you want to keep that tension on. Okay. Well, one of the things that I that I found that I was having trouble with, and I fix it, is, and I do this a lot, especially when I'm smallmouth fishing. I find myself in the wind, right? So you, I, trolling into the wind makes a, a lot of racket and noise, and you're drifting a lot. And when when you get to to the drift, uh, you have a tendency to throw in front of yourself. And I, uh, because it's easy, right? It flies off the reel, and but when you get the bite, you like you said, the fish is coming at you. The boat's coming towards the fish. So what I've what I've adopted in in all that drift oriented fishing is I try to I drift off the cover and I throw perpendicular mm -hmm. to the drift. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 that way, when you get the strike, you're able to instantly get a lot more pressure on yep. the fish, and that has helped me tremendously. That's point. about right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's. That's all you can do in those really windy situations. You don't want to do a straight in for a straight with it. You got, unless you're going with the wind, you're covering water. That's all right. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. you, you got to be ready for them. Yeah. Real fast. Yeah, <laughs> real fast. <laughs> well, you got, uh, I mean, you guys are famous at Duo for colors. You got some spectacular colors. You want to uh, talk a little bit about your favorites and uh, what we got here on the table? Yeah, these are new. These are ones with me and David. We, me and David talk a lot on the phone, like especially that he has, when he has time, he's busy too, but uh, especially when we're driving, we put our, we put our heads together and, and try to think of some cool colors. But this is a uh, Amart Shimmer. Yeah. Shimmer. I yeah. wanted to call it something uh, Glimmer, but Glimmer. Shimmer. <laughs> we call it Shimmer. It's a it's a really a green and blue. It's really a pretty bait. It's a, I want something really natural, kind of right. earthy looking, kind of like a like a fish would look in the water. That's kind of what that one does. Little emerald emerald shiner looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just you want to sit closer? Here, hold up there, dude. Get it up there. So that. That way more, that way. <laughs> what's the what's the name of that? Color? Actually, you gotta get really close like that. A Mart Shimmer. A Mart Shimmer. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that's the 100 too. That's a that's a great one. That's you. We'll talk yeah. about that in a little bit. This is a yeah. uh, this is a uh, smelt green yeah. smelt green smelt green smelt. A really oops, sorry. 
What was that? See if you can get your nostril up there and see. <laughs> that made boogers. <laughs> Green smell to me is this a uh, like a spinner bait, uh, swim jig. That's a okay. color I, I always have ready to go. Purple mist. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting used to names. We worked <laughs> on them together, but we decided on color names. It's Purple been mist. fun about this process, uh, yeah, Pete. Is one. we're these aren't finalized yet and we you know dual we take a lot of time on the r&d mm -hmm. um there's a couple baits that aaron's fishing now that really literally were three years i mean we planned the bait out and then we finally get to testing it by by the time it hits the market we're talking three years and some of our so even our well. painting yeah. process we're almost there on this but i already know you've worked with aaron it's not done yet, <laughs> so <laughs> so we're 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 finalizing this too. But it's, it's, a, little, it's a great little process. Changes we'll make them. Not mm -hmm. much. I mean, they're they're pretty dang close. They're good. Well, I, I, one of my, one of my favorite colors that you make is, uh, and I don't know the name of it, but I know the look of it. It's a translucent perch, uh, mm -hmm. little little color, yeah. and uh, got bars on it. Yeah, it's got bars. Ghost skill, yeah. probably ghost skill, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think it is ghost yeah. skill, and. Uh, Actually, I, and I'll tell a story about it. I, I, uh, I do a lot of uh, training and fishing up on uh, Lake Champlain. That's a prison. And, um, yeah, oh, yeah. that's prison there. Yeah, it's similar to that, but it's, it's translucent. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but anyway, we're, and, and often, you know, the, per the schools of perch are, are key. When you find the big schools of perch, you're often going to find the, the winning smallmouth. Mm -hmm. and, um, and actually, one of my uh, clients uh, pulled out the 100. Mm -hmm. uh in in the pre-spawn period and we absolutely could not keep the four pound smallmouth off of it it's a good um, one it's and, a good one. And, and, and it's so it was so much fun too because it was so so simple fit now i've duplicated this over and over since then but it's you're fishing in you know two to four feet of water these fish are staging on little tiny rock outcrops and they just would not let that bait get anywhere near those rock piles we started uh, we started talking before we did the show but that that 100 is I, I've been playing with it a lot, and I, it, it seems like it's a great pre-spawn. Like before they spawn, like when the water's look cold. Right. And it's got a really, <clears throat> it darts a little bit, but it's got a really tight rattle to it. It's like a really, like distinctive when you when you jerk it or pull it, it's like a, it's real tight. And I think that's what makes it work so well. You know, traditionally a jerk bait's gonna go side to side and kind of shake as it goes, and mm -hmm. it's gonna more glide off side to side. Yeah. That bait like wiggles, and, and when it stops, it kind of darts a little bit, and I think that's what makes it so effective. But I've I've smashed them on that this, this year on pre-spawn on, on a couple different lakes. Wow. Just killed them. Well, I, I, you know, when we talk about, like, technique on jerking, we just come back from Lake Oneida, the bass open up there, and the technique there was ripping like crazy. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you had to move that bait so fast to get, to get the fish to bite. That's like the, 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 like the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. like the 120. That's one of my favorites for that. That's a, it, okay. it's more, more of a traditional style. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one, the 120. It, uh, it 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 would be good. For, that's why that's I fish this one when the water warms up. That's been my favorite this year, right there. That one twenty. That's the big. That's big. It's more yeah. of a. Yeah. It's got flat sides. It's kind of flat. It's yeah. tall. So it, it really does. It kind of rolls off and, and darts really good side to side. It, it's okay. a great bait. Yeah, ripping's. Uh, that's I I'll mean, that's an outdoors. old school technique from way back <laughs> when, and guys have have refined that too. Yeah. Ripping with bl braid versus mono or. The Four rods that we used to use for that. Um, and that actually was considered in these jerk baits too, believe it or not. It, certain jerk baits do much better when you rip them than others do. Right. So some of them like some I, of them can roll. Yeah, they crump. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, balance was really, really important. So you can actually uh, rip all three of these baits. Mm -hmm. they, they'll behave a little bit differently. Like the one, if you can see, the, the 120, the head, and the 100. Mm -hmm. The 120's head is super narrow and sharp. That is designed to come through the water. Up right there, oh, here we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> you can talk and do that. I know. Here, I'll, I'll hold it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I can reach but, but each one is designed, each one of those uh, the on the baits no. are designed to behave a little bit differently. Yeah. But okay. the number one thing was balance, yes. So. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, uh, what, what other, uh, like, I'm always snap, snap, pause, snap, There's snap, mm -hmm. pause. Well, we're gonna talk, I was going to say something about that because, I mean, I, my, growing up uh, in the West Coast, you throw a jerk bait like Lake Mead mm -hmm. all year long. You go there in July, August, you know, 115 right. degrees out. A jerk bait is very effective for catching them. Um, but traditionally, you always heard of a jerk bait being like a pre-spawn, spawn, you know, maybe even a post-spawn. But after that, a lot of guys wouldn't take them in their boat. I know no. that for a fact. I talked we to saw, a lot of the guys. Well, heck, we saw it this year where yeah. the jerk bait was a uh, top five fish. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's just like a, you know, a square bill can be effective all year long. A, mm. a spinner bait can be effective. It's the same thing. A jerk mm. bait's just a, a bait that you can work to the water column up, up high. 
you know, besides the top water, you know, the second thing would be a jerk bait. But it's uh, it's the the way to work. It's just where you go, water water color, water temperature. You know, with the color of the bait and the way you work it. it it's just something that you really gotta play with. And you know, we get out there. I've been fishing so much. You get out there in those conditions, you can kind of almost naturally start doing with the right the right action to the bait but that's something you really got to just play with and uh you know, during the day it might change you know it might be able to speed it up or you might have to slow it down yeah but yeah the long pauses t typically that's when the water's cold uh summertime jerking usually no more than a second pause it's always kind of like a continuous I me mean, might pause it every five or six just a little bit let mm -hmm. maybe a fish kind of change it up on them but most of the time in the summertime it's a continuous kind of twitch and it can be really fast like you're saying a night is probably I imagine this time of year, this fish probably wanted it pretty quick. And well, they were hard to trigger strikes from. Yeah. And the speed so was So maybe key. like a five, like four yeah. or five, and then just kill it. Yep. And then, and then just try. That's something you got to do when you're just fishing it. It's something you got to just kind of learn on your Do you own. fish differently for smallmouth than you do for largemouth with these baits? He's a we're, he's a big, he's Columbia River, man. Uh, I fish smallies, too. Um, yeah, I mean, can. I mean, not really that much different though. Mm -hmm. If you say go to Gunnersville and catch my jerk on the edge of the grass in July or August, or you're catching them at Lake Erie or St. Clair or something, it's not going to be that much different. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, smallmouth typically are usually a little quicker, maybe less pause, uh, maybe a harder jerk mm -hmm. to get that reaction out of them. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> Jerk baits, uh, sometimes, it, they, like you said, the braid, I, I do go to braid with a floral leader sometimes. I'll use like 20 pound braid with like a 15 to 20 pound floral leader, and it just makes it easier because they want it so hard. You got like like a long jerk, like really long, bam, 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 and that's how you get them to come up and attack it. Uh, you know, if you sit there and do that, they won't get it. They'll just kind of come up on and then go off. Right. And, but if you get it, like start jerking it, you'll see them come up and they just, they just grab it, and that's because that was hard jerks, but it'll wear you out. If you do that for five, six, seven days in a row, eight days, I I know coming so back. So braid braid does make yeah, it a lot it, easier. Yeah, yeah. Lego <laughs> night in my arm oh, and wrist. Man. I was you have to stretch, guys. So right? if, if you're doing <laughs> that key. though, if you're doing that though, do the uh, try to if you're having a hard time with the elbows, it's a it, it can be an issue. Um, uh, if you get to that point, braid with a floral leader is way easier to jerk a bait like that. Uh, awesome, Carpenter, you got something for us? Yes, uh, and I apologize if you guys already answered this earlier, but what's the best thing to do if they're following but not eating the spin bait? David? You want yeah, to so a um, couple things. One, I think most of the guys are now figuring out is if they're getting a lot of followers, um, probably you're going to be able to get those fish to go. Fish behind them, I call it, cast way far behind them. Maybe let the bait get a little bit deeper so it's only three inches off the bottom and come through that school. I know that sounds almost backwards in some ways, but when as that bait starts to rise, you'll come right underneath those big fish and they'll actually sometimes come up and nail it when, when you're getting it close to cover is what I guess what I'm trying to say. The other way is um, we do these long strokes. I'll, I'll put the bait on the bottom and a lot of guys are afraid to do that. Oh, it's got treble hooks on the bottom. It's going to get hung up. You'll be amazed how many times you can pull it off the bottom, especially on gravel and that kind of stuff. Right. But I'll lay the bait on the bottom, and then I'll just slowly start reeling up through them. And then I'll reel a little bit faster, a little bit faster. If I don't get bit, speed, is yeah, a little bit. And it's, it's just kind of sauntering, and then it starts to take off. So right. that's another way. And then another, oh, no, go ahead. another way I do it is to bring it up through the column, and then I'll throw slack back into it. And it'll make the bait actually shimmer. Mm -hmm. Come back Fall down. down. Awesome. That was and a great, and, and, that was and great and color question. And color change can be a big, a little part, too. Sure, yes, absolutely. Picking the right, maybe putting something with a little chartreuse or something. Is, is there a follow-up technique in case they're, they're, they're following like another bait? Eating? Like another bait. Like a drop shot? <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> drop shot drop for shot. sure. Yeah. Um, and I alternate. Actually, sometimes I'll, I'll fish Ugh. a rip bait or a jerk bait, and then I'll fish a spy bait, and then I'll go back. So, right. yeah. So, yeah. But a drop shot's a real good way to. Yeah. Who asked that question, Brian? Uh, Ike and Ellie? Yeah. <laughs> 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 he knows, he already knows. Shout out to Ike and Ellie. Brian plus W. Thanks for yeah. the question. Thanks, Brian. Uh, and, and any other instant, any guys uh, for um, watching on Bash Unit TV Live, just instant message us. Uh, any questions you want to ask Aaron or Dave uh, about Duo Realis, uh, about fishing out, whatever it may be, just go ahead and instant message us, and we'll get those questions answered for you uh, here on Bash University. But uh, – Great, that's, that's great, great stuff, man. This is, and these are great baits. What do you guys have uh, in the pipeline? What's Ooh. coming? What's coming what next? Can we, what can we talk about? Gosh, um, <laughs> well, we, yeah, we can't talk about that. 
We got, we can't talk right about that. I know we're working on a, square, <laughs> we're, we're working on a, di like a different type of square bill too. I yeah. know we can talk about that. Yeah. You know, a spinner bait. Yeah, you know, there's so yeah. many. There's actually so many good square bills out there. There really there's are. There's so many. It's hard. You want to make them. You want to make one, but you yeah. want to make it different. So we want to do something. A lot of uh, our Realis baits, most of them, I'm going to say 90 percent, 80 percent of those baits are really designed for the tournament angler. So that's the consideration we will be taking okay. in the upcoming square bill. Um, what are the differences? Um, what are the idiosyncrasies that are actually going to give the guys an advantage? Uh, we, well, you probably remember we came out with the G87 crankbait. It's a deep diving crankbait. And the idea was to hit the target, yeah. hit the depth. But to get that, you know, we worked a lot on aerodynamics. So if you take that bait, it's only an ounce, to, and you take it and compare it to other crankbaits that are in that weight class or even heavier, it will cast more accurately and it'll cast longer um, or farther. So those are the things that we seek a lot of times. In the GA7 is a Yeah, great, it's a phenomenal great, great bait. If you guys haven't thrown it, I mean, I, there's a lot of good crankbaits really out there, good. but that yeah. one's, that uh, one's another done. Another thing about the Realis baits that I, re that I really like that, that I like in Realis so much is the durability of the baits is, is right. unmatched. Yeah. Okay. I like the all the baits. I've had I've hit docks. I've hit pilings with them. I have not broke a Rialis bait this year. Except when a pike. <laughs> I, 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 take I, I, I haven't lost one that. doing that. I haven't <laughs> fished for a pike yet. But I, I've bounced them off pilings. I've hit lot, like where right. I thought okay. for sure I had to broken it. Right, right. Nothing broken on it. It's a amazingly hit it on your power bait. pole. Yep, hit it on a trolling motor. Yeah. Hit the windshield. I've I've done that with all these baits. I have I have one that's caught yeah. like 500 fish. One of my jerk baits. It's unbelievable. It's I should have brought it. I didn't have it with me, but it's it's torn up. And I, I've hit all kinds of stuff with it, and there's no, no damage to it. Excellent. Well, just wear. It's an amazing product that catches a lot of fish. You got another question for us, Brock? Yeah, yeah I know you guys talked line earlier, but the question came through: uh, line on your spy bait, Aaron. Uh, like I said, I, I if I wasn't gonna go out and just and just throw it, like if I went right now and and this time of year and went fishing, I'd most likely I'd probably start off with like six pound fluoro. Yep. It's a good all around. You could, you could do the 90 on it. You could throw the 80 on it, and uh, it's a good for finding a depth. It's probably the best all around fishing line they use right now. They get a feel for it, and if you start catching them up higher, obviously you want a good little heavier line, eight pound. Mm -hmm. If they're catching them in say five and at five feet of water and ten feet of water, and you might go a little heavier, but six pounds is a good safe cast. Straight, straight floor, or unless or? you're fishing like Texas, where it's like giants and you're in standing timber and stuff. Straight floor. Straight floor. Okay. Now, what about visibility? When 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 do we put our spy baits away? I mean, what? Give me give me your good question. On that. So yeah. I I do get this uh, I do get this question a lot, um, and I'll kind of let that I'll let the secret out. the The bait can actually be fished in mm -hmm. what I would consider dirty water, but maybe you know back east it's it's considered stained water. Visibility maybe three to six foot, something in that area. Okay. You can oh, fish. You, you call can, that dirty? I do. <laughs> I know. We see, well, down, we see down to 25, 30 feet. So. Yeah. so, but I mean, if you could stick your rod tip in the water and barely see it, you know. Um, probably a little dirty. It's probably a little probably dirty. A foot. Probably, I mean, um, you catch some dirty water on it. But like people, foot, maybe. you know, I mean, part of releasing the technique was to help people get through that learning curve. And so, um, so the clear water was going to help them do that. But dingy water, you can definitely do it. Color lines, you can fish it in. Mm -hmm. um, the key is the dirtier the water, probably you want to focus in on the bait fish. I hate to say this, but bass actually eat in dirty water. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, or else, or else we'd lose populations, water. right? So is it possible? Yeah, I think, I think to, to increase your odds is actually to get that, that lure around bait fish. You know, okay. so that's probably... What do you got? Why are there no blue bluegill shaped jerk baits? Mm. I don't know. A, a it'd be hard, hard. What? It'd, yeah, be hard I, to, it'd be hard to it, cast. It, yeah, you you'd have to. I mean, off the top <laughs> of my head, the ballast system yeah. to that would be would have to be pretty elaborate. Yeah, yeah it still yeah. would. That's probably the main reason. This is castability. Now we're you probably jerky. You want to be able to fire it out there long distance. And so these, these baits. So Pete, we better work on a. I thought about <laughs> that. I just, I just don't think it, 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 for a short distance it, it could be a good. I mean, I've seen there's been attempts to make them over yeah. the years. I've seen, but I've I've bought I've bought them and tried them, and they're just hard to throw. They you go to cast them, they they just glide off to the side. So it's gonna you know, catch the fish that's eating a bluegill though. That's I mean, that's the thing. That's about I mean that bait for how flat it is. It's pretty exceptional how well it casts. All right. But that's probably the main reason. Well, I, you know, I, I think uh, Brian ought to get the com commission when Duo Might comes out with try. a bluegill jerk <laughs> bait yeah. next year. Yeah. We could try it. <laughs> Wins iCast yeah. 2018. Yeah, yeah we're on it. That one came through jerk the message Jerk and bluegill. Board, so. <laughs> that's a good, I mean, it's, it's possible, jerk yeah. and bluegill. <laughs> well, the, you know, great talk.
amazing baits, and I want to I appreciate you guys bringing them and showing them to us. But I want to tell you about your the Chesapeake tournament that you fished a couple years ago. Um, you should you shouldn't have gone to the Middle River. There's never should've, any fish I there. Have, I shouldn't have gone. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have gone. That was, that's the only reason I won. Everybody thought that. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was truly amazing. Uh, uh, congrats, it, congratulations on a great win on the chest. It's my Thank own you. body of water, right? I'm there all the time. Yeah, and yeah. Um, it's a good one. It's it, challenging. It's and, challenging fishery. But it was so dramatic. It was how you won that tournament, waiting for the tide. Ugh. Wait patiently. Yeah. They're missing your baits. You're in a position to win, and you just hung in there. And you rightfully said you said it. I, I remember listening that you know we gotta wait for that tide to get right, and they'll start so connecting. So important that the tide there, yeah. And boy, did they start and that connecting time of year, for you. especially. Yeah, it was an amazing tournament. Yeah, I remember that one. I tell you, we, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> we uh we used to years ago we we would long, uh, have tournaments in the Delaware River, and we would run. The down Chesapeake? to the middle river oh wow to, to catch limits of fish because that was e it was easier to do it's the place to go you had to go the wind yeah yeah you had yeah. to go to the middle river area how many miles is that oh that's oh, 90 it's, 100 120 uh, what is it's that probably not that it's not that long it's probably more like 70 60 no 70 wakes. miles but you got all these no wakes yeah, that you got to go no through wakes will kill you. big canal system and and all this other business but that was the place to be the fish were just that that part of the bay was where it was at and it hadn't been that way yeah. for years. Like they have uh, wintertime fish kills down there, and uh, yeah. oxygen depletion, and and the population will start getting big, and then it'll die back. Oh, they, and, they might, might, might migrate up the river. That was really weird because I when I went in there, I knew nothing about the Chesapeake. Um, I didn't go in there till like the second day of practice. Uh, I noticed there's bluegill everywhere, yeah. and grass looked good. And it's the prettiest looking stuff it I've seen. It looks that way even when the bass aren't there. Yeah. It looks and the, that but pretty. there wasn't. I kept fishing it for a long time. I didn't get any bites. I'm like, it looks so good. Where are they at? It gotta be here. I didn't know there's. Was, it wasn't that. I would have left if I would have known that rumor. It wasn't I know. Good. It's good that you didn't talk to I me. I kept on going and going. <laughs> and, and the first fish I caught was like a four pounder. I'm like, oh, it's all fat and healthy and it's yeah. really pretty. I'm like. There's more here. This one's here. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't a lot of bites. It was very few bites, seven, eight, nine bites a day, and that was it. They're mm. the, the right ones. The right ones. Yeah. Well, you and you weren't alone. I mean, uh, no, Randy Howe was three in there, or four, Jockinson. Jockinson, and uh, maybe one other one the first day, I think, maybe. So there wasn't nobody there. Which, that's the only reason I, I had a chance to win him there because there wasn't five or six or eight boats there, which would have – I wouldn't have won if, in that case, you know. But right, luckily, right. No, everybody left except for Carl stayed in there, and he did all right. And uh, – there's a lot. It was a lot of water for two boats to fish. That's that's why it happened the way it did. Tons, tons of water. And mm -hmm. uh, actually, the the river systems down below that uh, were dynamite river systems uh, for years and years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we'll we'll see. Uh, do you want to drop the news of what you the rumor you just told me oh, about that upcoming tournaments? That can we talk about that? I I don't Is know. That it's, a just secret? it's just rumor mills, as far as I'm concerned. Here first, yeah. Here first, <laughs> broadcast live. Bash you know, U breaking U news. Bash University live. I don't know where we're going. Actually, I just know a couple of them. We suspect, highly suspect. We have no confirmation that they may be back in the chess yep. week next season. And it's so. off limits from when they announce it. So I, I, there's a lot. I mean, you have to be really careful now. Which I, I, I fish that way anyways. That's how I fished my whole career. I, yeah. I don't yeah. go after information. So it's no different for me, but. No, a lot, a lot of guys that go out, yeah. I mean, I've, I can't say I've never gotten help. I really do. I just go fishing. I, I don't even worry about where I'm going. I just go. Wow. That's how I've always fished. That's why I don't want. But I've been getting to that point now where the last couple of years is getting tougher. The guys seem to find everything. Like, I used to have stuff, and I figure them out good. But now I I go back to those areas. It'll be, instead of being one or two boats there, there's like ten boats there. Mm -hmm. Right. Like a bunch of guys know about it. And I, I can't really. It's hard to find stuff that's that's not found. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping the new rules being off limits from when they that's announce the schedule. That's a new rule. Might, that's a new rule. Starting what next season? Next season. Well, now. It's so it's that wait, I know the schedule. Now that they announce the schedule, it okay. is off limits to any kind of information. You can't go fishing with somebody on that body of water, and you can't talk to anybody about that body of water. Wow. So basically, that's I, good. That's yeah. Good. If, yeah. I guess if I, I have my, so. if my kid wants to go fishing, me like my Jordan wants to go fishing, my daughter, I. I'd have to find out, but I'm pretty sure she could go with me because she's you know, never been to a lot of the places we're going. So in that case, you're probably all right. But if, he, if somebody's been on that water before, you can't wow. can't yeah. talk to them or go with them. Yeah. Do you scout a body of water? I pre I pre practice as many as I can. Do but you? My kids are 10 and 13. It's kind of tough right now. Sure. So they're getting that age where they're they're getting big and and getting almost where they're going to be going to college soon. Yeah. 
Well, so I, I do as much as I can, and, and when you get at, like where I'm at in my stage of my career, that it, it's I do a lot of these things, you know, yep. early in the year, and you're busy, busier, and you don't get as much time to fish, you know, with kids, yep. family. Uh, it'll probably change in a few years, and it'll be sad, but I'll be able to fish more. But I'm at that weird stage right now where it's hard to get out and go pre-practice. Yeah, I I I can appreciate it. My son's going to be eight years old, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's hard it's hard to find the time. But uh, yeah. you know, obviously you're fishing at the highest level, and you've got to compete against the best in the right. world, and you got to do what you got to do. A lot of the young guys come in are fishing seven to fourteen days a lot for pre-practice. So they it sure is, are. So that's why a lot of Jamie, the spot Jamie Hartman is. I know he's a friend of Jake mine. Jake Wheeler said and, you know average is fishing I think about six seven days up. up of a practice which is wow. a ton that's a ton of a practice um so that definitely helps a lot and that i think that's why the like the way i've been fishing over the years like i do find stuff it seems like when i do find something good it'll be like instead of being one or two boats it'll be like 10 boats there it's been a, yeah. a story this whole season like i think i find something but once you go there in a the tournament it's like oh man <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. then you go to the other spot and there's four boats there mm -hmm. it's like you can't really find maybe it's a, the the season way it's been going the time of year we've been going to a lot of these fisheries it's been like that but a lot of it's the electronics, I so think, uh, too. That the, ske the scheduling for yeah, the events, too, it makes them kind of like that, too. You know, I, mm -hmm. I like it when fish are, like, uh, I'm excited. I'm always excited about the northern pool because there, there's those lakes are, like, uh, there's area-related, but more pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, fish tend to be in more places than down here. Uh, a lot of times down here, the fish are so beat up and... It seems like everybody gets kind of concentrated. It's hard to find something away from everybody. Right, right. It seems like you get closer to the, the hub. It's almost like there's a hub in these lakes. Probably from the amount of tournaments you have and mm -hmm. and uh, the amount of tournaments, you know, four or five, six, <laughs> we know how many, seven, how many tournaments some of these lakes have, but way more than that. Uh, they constantly bring fish back, and it seems right. like there's a hub. There's hubs in the lake that mm -hmm. fish, and that's where everybody fishes. Right, right. <laughs> you might get some out there, but. Well, we've got some big populations much. where you guys are fishing. Up there, and uh, do you do you? What do you think about the Thousand Islands with two feet up? Ooh, that's gonna be that's gonna be. I'm, I'm a little nervous about that because of the lock situation that we're I'm yeah. hearing about that they might have the lock closed yeah. oh. and there's no gate. Now usually we go right to that gate and it's like a five mile hour zone. It's 100 feet or so, 200 feet long of no wake, and that's mm. it. You get back on pad and jamming again. But now that that gate's closed and the lock i'm not sure how that's good, how that's gonna work but i think if we can unlock through it'd be fine that's gonna take a little extra time but well and the no wake zone 600 feet from shore that's gonna make it harder it, to it, run and gun and there's gonna be out. a lot of complications out that yeah. side of the scope of fish not to mention the fact that you got high water and extra current that it is complicated around. It's complicates yeah. it yeah, yeah. I think that's gonna be so it's gonna be real exciting to see but you, good news is you got giant large mouth and giant small mouth mm -hmm. of fish for up there so it'll be fun to watch it is but, good uh, fishery but I want to thank you guys. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate so you guys. So good to see you again. Being, you, being, being with me today. Appreciate you showing me these great tools and good luck uh, with with the baits. And good luck the rest of the season. We'll be, we'll be watching. Thank you. I'm Pete Kluzek, live Bash U TV from 2017 iCast. We're gonna be. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break, Brian. Or are we just gonna roll? Uh, about three minutes, and then Luke Duncan. Three minutes, and we're gonna be talking with TH Marine. They build the best products for your boat. We're gonna be talking all about them here in just a few minutes. I'll be right back.